Hi, I'm Claire. I teach computer applications technology here in Johannesburg. You know how your teacher always tells you to practice past papers? Yeah, that doesn't really help if you don't know how to do half of the stuff. That's what this is for. You'll find a link to the files in the description below, along with the table of contents, so you can just click straight to the question you need help with. We all learn the best from our mistakes, so please, you have to try this by yourself before you watch this video. Let's get into it. Always enable content. We're starting with the type table and we're going to be working in design view. Firstly, we need to change the primary key to a more appropriate field. So to do that, let's quickly have a look at the descriptions. If you read the descriptions, you'll see the first one actually says identification code and that would be the best one. So you click on the field name and then you change the primary key. Next, the survey code that we're busy with at the moment contains a combination of letter and digits. So fortunately for us, they've actually allowed us to use an input mask uh, and they've given us an input mask sheet from last year, character sheet. So let's have a look at what we need. We need to start with a compulsory capital letter. Compulsory means the entry is required. So that would be an L to make a letter and to make it a capital letter, we'll use the greater than sign. Then we need to have it followed by either a compulsory letter or a compulsory digit. So the entry is required and it has to be a letter or a digit and you'll see that one is a capital A. Then we need it followed by one optional digit. So the entry is not required. Entry optional and optional digit. No, this is a letter or digit. So the best one that fits this is this one, the digit or space, because this one has plus and minus signs and whatnot as well. So just a nine for a digit or space. Next, we need to change the field properties of the end date. So we go and stand by the correct field. And we need to change it so that it does not accept a date after the year 2019. So we're not going to tell it what it should not accept. We're going to tell it what it has to accept. So it has to accept something that is prior to the end of 2019. So it needs to be prior to the 1st of January 2020. And as soon as I click away, you'll see it adds hashtags automatically. If that doesn't happen, then you need to add it yourself. Then we also need to add appropriate validation text. So anything that describes in words what we've just done. So year cannot be after 2019, something like that. Next, we're working with a years field and they say the duration of the surveys will be in completed years in the range of zero to 10 and change the data type to something more suitable. So I'm gonna change the data type to number and you'll see, lucky for us, from 2016, I don't know if the previous versions of Office does that, but it actually adds the default value of zero by itself, which was actually the next question. Add the number zero as a default value. Next, we're working with the feedback field and we're asked that a user has to enter a value in this field. So that means the field is required. So we can either type in yes, or we can use the drop down arrow, or if we just double click, then it rotates between the options in the drop down list. So there it's yes. Now, the purpose field currently displays three values, medical, scientific, and advertising. Let's have a look. Okay, so they want us to change these values and remove scientific. So you can actually right click at this point and say that you want to edit the list items and change it over here. But the traditional way of doing it is to stand on the field name, go to the lookup section and then just remove scientific from there. But both ways would be accepted. Save. That's the table. Save it, close. Next, we're working with the form 5-2. 
we're going to start by changing the color of the participant ID field. So do you see these all have the contents of the database? And if I, if I actually uh, look at them, then you'll see they keep changing. So this side, we can find all the fields and all the labels on this side. So let's go to our design view. We're going to work in our design view predominantly. So this is the participant ID field. And we're going to change the background color of that field to red. So on the format tab, light red, something like that. Next, we need to add a picture to the form header. That's the form header section. Now, whenever you've moved around between ribbons and you can't find what you're looking for, remember the design view usually goes along with the design tab. So if you're back on the design tab, you should find what you're looking for. Now, if you use this insert image, I wouldn't really recommend it because um, it often doesn't recognize all the image formats. So the best way to do it is just to click on that drop down arrow and go and click on image. And then I can just say where I want it positioned and then I can go and select it. Now we need to format the income field to currency. You can do it here on your, if the property sheet wasn't open, you can just open property sheet again and you can change the format here to currency. You could also do that on the format tab over here. Now we need to insert a button control in the details section. This is the details section after the survey ID field. So it needs to come here. So that is the button control. Click it. I'm not going to select it because I don't know how big it needs to be. And then they say we need to select an option that the next record will be shown if you click the button. So that is that has to do with record navigation. We don't want to find the next record. We actually want to just go to the next record. And then I'm going to just choose all the defaults that it suggests. Let's have a look whether this works. Nice. Back to design view. We now need to insert the date and time in the form footer. So you'll see that's where the form footer is. Let's just create a bit of space. And then I'm going to go to date and time. OK. Now, when you put date and time in, it actually inserts it in the form header. So you're going to have to move it to the form footer. Easiest way to do that is to select it. I just click under it and drag over it and it's selected. And then I can drag it down. If the drag doesn't work, sometimes there's issues, then you can just use cut and paste. That's our form. Save. Close. Now we're starting with our queries. The first query is 5.3. Now it's critical that you actually have a look at your data sheet view properly before you start inserting criteria. So they want all the female participants who do not use insulin devices. Now, the gender is only indicated with an M or an F. If you hadn't looked at the side, you would have probably typed in the word female instead of just an F to get the gender. Let's just do that to start with. It's always best practice to do one criteria at a time so that you can go and test if it works. Yes, that one worked. Then they want it uh, all the people who do not ins use insulin devices. And if we look here, you'll see they actually said none. So I'll just type in none over there. And access adds the parentheses by themselves by itself. So if it doesn't, you just need to know you have to add it. Save, close. Now we need to create a query 54 based on the participant table. Okay, so this one's quite interesting. If we have a look here, we're going to need three fields, the education level, a diabetic type, and the total number of tests. So let's just go and start the basic query, then we'll do the funny, interesting stuff now. So we're going to say create query wizard. Which table are we going to use? The table participants. Okay, and we have to add type, number of tests, and the education level. Okay, firstly, I'm just going to change the order that it's the same as the example. So education le level needs to come first. So I'm going to design view. And you can't just click and drag because that just selects. So what you have to do is you first select with your black arrow once. 
you leave your button and then you can click with a white arrow and move it. So we have education level, type and number of tests. So if we look at the example they've given us, that's exactly the same, education level, type, and here it says sum of number of tests. Now this is not the field name that I need to change. This will actually happen automatically if I apply aggregate functions. So let's go and switch on aggregate functions. And be careful, the totals in your data sheet view does not do the same thing. You have to be in design view and then switch on your totals. Keep your eye on the section here at the bottom. At the moment we have field table sort. And as soon as I click totals, we have a new row that says group by, group by, group by. Let's just have a look at this so far. So it's actually done some kind of sorting at the moment, but we actually want it, if we look at this, um, we want it to say this is the education level and it has to group all of the type one of the college graduate together and then sum this number of tests. So the fact that there's no extra description here by education level and by type means that those two fields have just been grouped. They didn't do anything else to it. But the third field, sum of number of tests, is the one where they actually changed the um, function. So we're going to go back to design view and we're going to change the number of tests to sum. If we go back now, you'll see it's actually changed the name to be the same as the example in the exam. We can save and close. Query 5.5. Five. We need to display the names and the birth dates of all Indian participants. So the fact that they are an Indian partic participant is here uh, specified in the race field and we'll have to add their birth dates. So let's go to our design view and we have to add their birth date. I don't see anything about birth date, but there is a date of birth. So let's add that one. And we have to increase the field size to see everything. All right, so we only want the Indian participants. So I'm just copying this so long, and then I can just paste this in the race field. See, it's added the um, parentheses by itself. And there I have only the names and dates of birth of the Indian participants. Now, I think it's implied that they only want the names and the dates of birth of the Indian participants. So I'm going to remove the show tick from the race field and save that so that I only have the names and dates of birth. They did not award a mark for that, but I'd rather be safe than sorry. If we open 5.6. Usually the last query is the calculated one, and this is our calculated query. We need to add a new field with the name paid to see how much each participant will be paid for the tests they participated in. We can find the number of tests they did and the test fee for each test over here. So we're just going to multiply these two fields. Go to our design view. I prefer going into zoom so that there's a bit more space and I can change the font size to something a bit bigger. We're going to start off by creating the new field's name and it's paid. The semicolon means the field name is finished and now we're going to start with a calculation. Now, usually I would say that you have to use the field names and put them in square brackets. But did you know if there's no space in the field name, then you can actually just type the field name and it will automatically add square brackets for you. Have a look. You see it's added that automatically. There you go. Now they clearly specify we only need to display the names, number of tests and the paid field. So I'm just going to remove the show tick from the test fee field. Save, check it, close. We need to create a report based on the participant table. What's nice is if you actually click on the table name before you start it, then the wizard automatically selects that one as the source. You can change it over here though. Right, so we need to display the fields, education level, type, names, race, and number of tests. The second step asks us for grouping levels, and there are two grouping levels we need to do. We need to first group it by education level and then by type. They did not specify any sorting order. They did not specify any layout or orientation changes. So we're just going to give it the name and then do our calculation. If 
part. So let's just have a look and see what they actually want us to do. They want us to count the number of people that completed the surveys per the diabetic type. So per this grouping, per the type grouping, we need to count how many people did the survey. So I'm going to close print preview. If you're comfortable with functions in Excel, then you can just use a text box and pop it right here in the type header and type in your own function. I've got a different method that I prefer. I use my group and sort command and I'm going to use the type grouping and I want to do a calculation. So I'm going to go to more and I don't want no totals. I actually want to do a count. Now let's just quickly see what kind of field would one usually count. If you want to count how many people, then I'm going to count the names. So I want the total of the names and I want to count, yes, records or values, they'll get your mark either way. And then you can choose, do you want it to be shown in the group header or in the group footer? I prefer the group footer. You'll see it adds a footer for this grouping automatically. The moment I check that box, see, there's a group footer and it's already added the whole calculation for you if you struggle with the syntax. They didn't ask for it, but if they ask for a label as well, then you could just insert a label afterwards something like that and if you want to be really pedantic about it you'll see that it has that little green box in the corner and um, that means there's an error code and if you can just go and say associate label with a control it picks that one automatically and it links those two and there it looks perfect exactly the way it would have looked if you had done it in the normal way we can save this report let's have a look number of people there you go and save and close